Yeah, um, I, I, I'm looking forward to that show. And like I mentioned to Taylor earlier, but um, for all mankind, I'm I'm psyched to get back into for all mankind because I don't know if you remember how that ended, but Margot was in the had defected to the Soviet Union. We had skipped forward to the the mid nineties or so. Uh, well, fuck me. No, it's okay. What? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, assumed you finished the show. <laughs> I, um, I was thinking of watching that with Jackie. Start very on. good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's uh, to me that's one of the like AAA titles that's on TV right now. If I was going to make a top ten list of shows that are actually on TV right now, not the old shit that we will rewatch over and over, that would definitely be in the top five for all mankind. It's so fun. I like those characters. I care about what they're doing. And I, I really enjoy that alternate history thing. It drags um, a little sometimes. Yeah, you know, I don't remember it dragging, but here's a storyline. Uh, I think you you've complained about it dragging in some of the seasons where you're like, you know, they haven't gone to space for like nine episodes now. This is oh. a show about going to space. You're right. I remember saying that. Yeah, yeah. I got some rose colored glasses a little bit, but just to me, the the highlights of that show are definitely enough to 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 make me love it. Um, uh, the other one um, is that I've never watched, but it's alternate history is man in the high castle. Did you ever get into that? I maybe the first season it's yeah. The, I, maybe the South winds a civil war and that has an no. impact on world war two. How does it go? Well, I I've never watched it, but I, I know that the United States loses world war two and ja- Japan and the Nazis split the United States and Japan has, I'm sure the West coast and, and obviously in the, and Germany would own the, um, the East coast. And I think they they got like literally split in half down the middle. And so the U.S. is living under that Nazi occupation. I think the Statue of Liberty is maybe replaced with a Sig Heiling statue of some kind or something like that. And it's like full on nat- Nazi flags flying. They should have uh, split I don't, it on the Mississippi River. Makes way more sense. They, they may have. Mm. Um, I, I just I just one time uh, glanced at a map, but I've never gotten into that. But it, it's honestly it kind of seems. Oh, there's North America still hanging on there in the center, huh? I think that's maybe what that's representing. Uh, in the Midwest, you know, you've got the orange of Alaska I'm, down to the. I'm imagining Japan being the orange side and Germany being the red. Yeah, yeah, as well. Oh, oh, and you're saying the gray is us? Yeah, and yeah, like, like what? Oh, hmm. Mexico, perhaps? Oh, maybe, or maybe it's just the unaffiliated nations there. It's not a great map, but yeah, I um. <clears throat> I've never gotten into that. I the reason is I kind of feel I, I, we won that one. <laughs> like don't take I don't want to see us take I don't want to see that one taken take away, away. That win, you know that's it's you know, yeah. This America's also finest see, victory. We single handedly won it. They were all about to die until we got there and rescued them. And I, if I recall correctly, the Russians and the British and the French they just thanked us for what we did. Um. Well, the British and the French certainly did. They're, they they paid us back for 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 a long time. Um. You know, we we that that would have gone very differently without the United States intervention because the British were starving. The British didn't have pilots. The British didn't have planes. The British didn't have anything. They were done. They at, when they when they got ca- uh, at Dunkirk, the entire British army was trapped on that beach, like like all of them, and they were going to die. Churchill orders. I think there's four four thousand or six thousand men at Calais, which is um, further down on a French uh, beach. He orders them to to run up and delay the entire German offensive for as long as they can so that he can get the men off the beach. That was Operation Dynamo, um, where they uh, they mobilized the entire British um, civilian fleet, hundreds and hundreds of boats, anything 30 feet or longer, I think, and sent them to France and just picked all the guys up. They uh, the they didn't think they were going to get any of them out at first. Churchill's like, what do you mean? You're telling me that I've lost the entire British professional army. Yes, sir. Jesus, boys. What if we didn't do it? Because he just took over. Over 300,000 like soldiers were rescued. That's a huge yeah. number. That was just the Brits. The, 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 the French were there getting their asses eaten. The French had capitulated. That sounds fun. Right away. Uh, it's, um, and, but, 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 but they were fucked without our, our interve- intervention. Well, we wouldn't even give eating. them the planes. Yeah. There's this real fun moment um, in, um, in in a movie about the whole thing where Churchill calls Franklin uh, Roosevelt. Uh, and he's like, "Hey, times are rough over here. Can you can you if you could send us fifty battleships, even 40, 40 would do." 
He's like, ah, you know, we, my hands are tied with that treaty I signed last year. I, there's nothing I can do. He's like, all right, well, what about those P-40 fighter planes that we, we bought from you? When can we get those here? Well, you got me again there. Uh, hands tied, you know, I can't, can't get those to you either. I'm not allowed to, to, to ship military armaments by sea anymore. Or, or yeah. so I don't know what to do. Like, but we paid for them, you know, with the money we borrowed from you. <laughs> <laughs> and that what they did was, he's like, well, we could drive them within a mile of the Canadian border. Remember, Canada's part of the British Empire. We could drive them within a mile of the Canadian border, <clears throat> the fighter planes. And you could send men with horses over, nothing with a motor. You could tow them back to Canada. Horses? Did you say horses, Franklin? <laughs> well, you could push them. They do have wheels. <laughs> and that's what they did until, you know, Japan attacked and ruined the whole fucking thing. Yeah, that was a strategic mistake. Yeah. And then we started sending <clears throat> planes and pilots and everything else they need. I was reading about this Polish fighter uh, group that fought in the Battle of Britain. And their numbers were like 20 times more efficient than any other unit uh, in mm -hmm. the Battle of Britain. And uh, I watched this whole documentary about how the Polish had this. They would have 6,000 um, applicants for the Air Force Academy and they would take 100. And, and they would base it a lot mostly on eyesight at first and aptitude. And so their guys were like fucking eagle eyed. The 100 they picked were, had incredible vision. They would always spot planes and they... Uh, they had had to fight in shitty planes against the best of the Germans. So when they got to the Battle of Britain, these guys had 5,000 hours of experience, like a fucking video game pro. And mm -hmm. everybody else had like 100, 150, 300 hours. And uh, their record was insane. I don't know. I can't remember off the top. I never of heard that. about that. Like, That's really cool. Yeah. It was like the uh, 303rd uh, Battalion or something like 303. That, that number's in my head.